Hi, welcome to Movie Short Flicks. Today I'm going to explain to you the film called Blood Red Sky. Warning, spoiler ahead. Anyway, enjoy watching. An RAF airbase in Scotland is getting prepared for the landing of a transatlantic flight that has been hijacked. Colonel Drummond has been called in to deal with the situation, and as soon as he lands an officer informs him that they are working under the assumption that the pilot and co-pilot are dead. He has the information that there is at least one person on board the plane who is on the German terrorist watch list. As Drummond walks into the control center, an officer communicates with the plane, explaining how they should land while another officer observes their approach. The plane lands a little rough, then Drummond asks his men for a visual and contacts the plane asking about the situation on board when movement suddenly appears near one of the doors. A parachute drops down from it and the soldiers see a boy climbing down, then is approached by two RAF trucks ordered by Drummond to get him out of there. They see a new subject in the cockpit and Drummond radios him, saying that they will open fire if he moves, instructing him to climb into the pilot's seat and slowly raise his hands. The man asks to be let out of the plane so he can explain everything to them, insisting that he's not a terrorist. Later, Drummond sends his translator to talk to the boy, Elias, who's being examined by a doctor. She doesn't learn anything from him because he's in shock. We go back a day earlier in a hotel room and see Elias' mother, Nadia, in the bathroom getting ready for the flight. Later, she talks to her doctor in New York, where she and Elias will be traveling for the treatment of her mysterious illness. Elias calls Nadia to tell her that he checked their luggage, and later she arrives at the airport at night, greets her son, then they pass through airport security and proceed to the waiting room where she leaves Elias and goes to the bathroom before their flight. Nadia opens her medicine bag and preps a syringe with her medicine, then drinks from a bottle, instantly feeling the effects of the drink, then she injects herself with the syringe. Farid is on the phone in the waiting room when Elias begins talking to him, they have a fun chat, and then Farid asks him where his mother is. Nadia soon arrives and later they can be seen going inside the plane and taking their seats. Meanwhile, the main stewardess enters through the cockpit and asks the pilot and co-pilot Bastian if they'd like some coffee. She goes to the stewardess's station on board to get it and asks 8ball to take care of a sexist passenger in first class for her. The plane finally takes off from Germany and is headed to the US. After a few hours, Nadia returns to her seat from the bathroom and she writes something down in her notebook, finding a photo from her and her husband inside. She remembers him fondly in a sequence of events that starts benignly, and ends up with them and their baby being stranded in the middle of nowhere. Her husband leaves to find help and Nadia stays back with the baby. During her current flight, she notices a commotion in the front end of the plane. Eightball is trying to reason with an unruly passenger when one of the air marshals subdues him and the second air marshal joins them up front. As the air marshals talk to the passenger, Eightball takes out a knife and kills the second marshal, while the passenger overtakes the first one. Eightball asks where the third air marshal is and when he learns the information, he sends one of his men to take care of her. Curtis kills the marshal, takes her gun, and gives it to Berg and when he gets back to Eightball, the maniac kills the remaining air marshal violently to the disgust of Carl. Nadja senses something is happening. Suddenly, Eightball walks back to the passengers and tells them to remain seated while he flings a gun at them. His conspirators join him and make everybody go into the back of the plane. Bird goes to the cockpit and knocks on the door when Bastion opens it for him and tells him that he killed the pilot. They open the hatch and throw him down into the other level of the plane, then Bird makes an announcement to the passengers that they have taken over and orders the passengers to put their hands on the seat in front of them. The bearded guy Yuri finds the black box and reprograms it, then tells Berg about it in the cockpit. The co-pilot turns the plane. Elias gets scared for his mom even though she tells him not to worry, but he checks the plane schematics and tells her where she can hide from the sunlight. Curtis gets Farid to get up and move to the front of the plane, while Carl tries to calm 8-Ball and Elias escapes from his seat. Nadia goes after Elias and 8-Ball after them, then he still shoots her in front of Elias. He grabs the boy and Carl puts him back in his seat, telling him to stay there. Bird meets Curtis halfway to the back and Curtis tells him what happened. Berg approaches 8-Ball and tells him that if he does something like that again he'll kill him, but he still uses Nadia's death as an example to the other passengers. In a flashback, we go back to the car where Nadia is waiting with her baby for her husband to get help back to them. After waiting for a while, she leaves the car and walks into the woods, following in her husband's footsteps. Nadia comes upon an abandoned house and thinks she'll find him there. Inside of the house she sees blood on the floor and follows a line of it down toward the basement when a vampire comes out of nowhere and chases her down. She locks herself in the basement where she finds her husband, dead. The creature tries to come in through a window and Nadia goes to fight it off, but it bites her before it gets killed by the sunlight. She wakes up in the plane, alive. Nadia hears dogs in the hold and drops down into it through a hatch. Meanwhile, Berg forces Farid and two other men into reading a terrorist-sounding message. 
Back in the hold, Nadia hides under a car as Curtis and Yuri come down looking for tools to build a bomb. Yuri sets it up as Nadia gets to one of the dogs and feasts on it. The dog makes enough noises to piss off Yuri and make him come back to find Nadia hiding behind a car, who then attacks him and kills him. Simultaneously, Farid gets back to the other passengers and heads straight to Elias, sitting down next to him. Nadia begins to change into her vampire form rapidly, feeling her teeth coming in so she finds the medicine and gets ready to inject it when she hears Berg call Yuri, telling him that there are 10 minutes to the jump. Nadia goes back to Yuri's body and drinks his blood, speeding up her transformation, then she walks back to the other part of the plane. The hijackers lie to the passengers that they will set off a nerve gas if they move from their seats, then they proceed to the hold where they find Yuri with a dog next to him, which Nadia has set loose to look like it killed him. She gets in the back of the plane to get Elias, freaking out the other passengers that she'll set off the gas. Nadia and Elias go to the cockpit where they discover that the pilots have left so she comes back to the passengers and asks for someone that can fly a plane. One of the men says that he can do it and goes with Nadia, as Farid tells the other passengers about what he read in the statement. Nadia and the guy go to the cockpit, and she locks the doors before Farid can join them there. In the meantime, the hijackers get into their scuba gear and are ready to jump, while Berg communicates with the man that will pick them up from the ocean. Nadia continues to transform in the cockpit, worrying Elias, when the guy realizes that they're on autopilot. She sees the hijackers on the security monitors and tells him to wait for them to jump before he turns it off. 8-Ball has figured out that she isn't dead and comes back to the plane with Berg, looking for her. One of the passengers tells them that she's in the cockpit so they go there and ask her to open the door. Nadia tells the man to turn the plane around toward the US again, even though he tells her they're closer to Europe. He's scared of her so he obliges her command and when the hijackers notice the plane turning, Berg threatens to kill a passenger. He shoots him and tells Nadia that they'll keep killing others until she opens the door, then tells 8-Ball to get him another one. The psychopath finds a little girl and brings her to Berg who shows her to Nadia. He begins the countdown and before he can shoot the girl, Nadia jumps out of the cockpit and attacks him, biting straight into his neck, scaring the hell out of Bastian and the others. The guy in the cockpit shuts and locks the door again with Elias inside. Nadia finishes drinking Berg's blood and then goes after the rest of them who run back to the hold. Berg begins changing and when she hears it, Nadia goes back to kill him, with 8-Ball seeing it all happen. She goes back to the door and tells Elias not to open it because he's safer there, then goes into the lavatory and sees how much her transformation has progressed. 8-Ball asks to see her bag and comes back down to the other hijackers reading from her notebook. He says that she's a vampire, but since Carl didn't see what happened he doesn't believe the rest when they tell him what Nadia did. Carl is too caught up with how maniacal 8-Ball is, who shows the others a UV light to hurt Nadia. She injects herself with the medicine and goes into another flashback. Nadia tries to take care of Elias as a baby, while also feeding herself. As the baby keeps crying, she hisses at it but then goes to the bathroom to rip her fangs out so she doesn't hurt him. One day, Nadia goes back to the house where she got turned, when the father of the vampire that made her shows up. The man tells her that his son couldn't control himself and neither can he despite his appearance. The man shoots her, saying that they are all cursed and bring only suffering. Back at the plane, 8 Ball is making a stake and the others are arguing over what to do now. Carl convinces Bastian that their only chance is to get back in the cockpit and get the plane back on course. Elias gets out of the cockpit, ignoring the pleas from the guy to stay inside, and gets his mother out of the bathroom, dragging her back. The hijackers get back up and when the guy sees them he locks himself back up in the cockpit. Nadia rises and goes toward 8 Ball who's waiting for her with a stake and a UV light. He burns her and she faints, so he tells the others to take control back, while he stays behind to figure out what she is. 8-Ball finds a syringe and fills it with her blood and when he wants to stake her, Elias shows up threatening him with a gun. The psychopath goes toward Elias and when he reaches for the gun, it shoots the window open and the plane destabilizes because of the pressure drop. Bastian tells the others that they have oxygen for only 10 more minutes and they have to get the plane lower. Nadia gets Elias to an oxygen mast, takes the gun, and shoots 8-Ball, who runs away. Simultaneously, the guy in the cockpit passes out because he can't hold the door and get to a mask at the same time, which allows the hijackers to get back inside. Nadia brings Elias to the other part of the plane and gives him over to Farid as the plane suddenly loses altitude. She goes after 8-Ball and finds him inside a bulletproof car, so no matter how much she shoots at him, nothing happens. The maniac injects himself with her blood even though she begs him not to do it. 8-Ball immediately begins to turn and Nadia figures out what she has to do to stop him. She finds matches and alcohol, then comes back and pours it inside the car, lighting 8-Ball on fire. Nadia remembers the old vampire telling her that they cannot let their evil spread and they must stop it. She begins smashing his face and before she strikes the final blow, the man says that she cannot control the evil inside of her. 
The plane finally stabilizes, but the hijackers see that there is a fire in the hold though before they come down, Nadia has already contained the fire and is crawling back inside the plane. The hijackers shoot at Nadia and the passengers freak out so they stampede toward the front of the plane, including Farid carrying Elias. The hijackers find 8-Ball in the car alive when he suddenly attacks Curtis and drunks his blood, then gets out and goes after the others. Nadia secures the door to the hold and hears Elias yelling after her that the passengers want to kill her. Farid however calls out saying that they won't hurt her, clearly not on the same page as the others, one of which shoots her. She attacks the other one and they try to contain her, but she just breaks free and goes after Farid. Elias convinces her not to kill him as the other man points a gun at her. Nadia hears the other vampires in the hold and says that they can't let them come back on board, so she runs down and tries to contain 8-Ball behind a door. Farid runs to her aid and gets bitten by Ethball who gets shot by the other guy when he pushes through the door. Nadia chops off Farid's hand to stop the spread to the rest of his body while Curtis, now fully turned, tries to get back into the plane from below. Nadia manages to put him and 8-Ball back down, saving the stewardess from becoming vampire grub. After that, she goes back to the passengers and finds Bastion, while Farid reassures them that she's on their side. Nadia takes him back to the cockpit where he tells her that they have to find the nearest airport to land because they are running low on fuel. Farid and Elias convince her to go below the cockpit where it's dark as he stays behind with Bastion. The moment that the pilot gets a signal from the nearby RAF airbase he tells them that they have been hijacked, but that they were able to overpower the hijackers and lock them in the cargo hold. Meanwhile, Elias goes up to look for his mother's medicine while the passengers hear the vampires rampaging in the hold. One of the hurt passengers decides to go down to the vampires because he's dying and releases 8-Ball, asking to be bitten. 8-Ball just storms past him and attacks the other passengers. Nadia and Farid see that the airplane has turned into complete pandemonium as the other passengers flock to the cockpit doors, trying to get in. Bastian doesn't allow them to open the door and Nadia realizes that they shouldn't land the plane because the vampires would get out. Farid thinks that they should land the plane and then blow it up remotely, so they go to the fuel tank to set up the explosive and realize that they have a detonator but no timer. Nadia volunteers to blow up the plane manually when all of them get out of the plane and explains to Elias that it must be done. The boy isn't interested in leaving his mother to die, so he runs down into the hold to find the hijacker's timer, protecting himself with a UV light. The vampires in the hold go after Elias, but he manages to dodge all of them. Elias finds the right tool and starts coming back to the cockpit when the vampires attack him and he drops the light. Nadia sees what is happening from the cockpit and decides to help Elias. She asks Bastion if the airplane is on the right track and he tells her that it's on autopilot, explaining that with traffic control anyone can land the plane at this point. Nadia turns to Farid and makes him promise that he will take care of her son, then feeds on Bastion, knowing that it will make her transformation final. Elias gets attacked by the other vampires when 8-Ball hears him scream and claims him for himself. Before he can get to the boy, Nadia attacks him and the two vampires fight in the hold. 8-Ball bites into her when Elias gets the idea to blow out the hold door so his mother can push 8-Ball out of there. Meanwhile, Farid sees that the boy is left alone in the hold with his mother, when 8-Ball crawls back inside the plane and goes after the boy. Farid turns off the autopilot and turns the plane sideways, killing 8-Ball by exposing him to the sunlight. Elias feeds his mother his own blood and she wakes up, barely controlling herself not to feed on him more. She pushes him away and crawls back into the hold. Back in the RAF base, Elias asks the translator about Farid and begs her to get him out, but the racist tells him that no matter what Farid has told him that he's one of the bad guys. Elias tells her that they have to save him from the vampires before the sun goes down. They sedate the boy and Drummond gets back to control. He orders his officers to wait while the vampires on the plane feed of the remaining bodies. The army keeps talking to Farid and tries to convince him to hand himself over, not understanding what is happening, nor listening to his pleas. They finally shoot him down and get to the plane, coming inside and taking him out before he can blow it up. The soldiers get inside the plane unaware of what is waiting for them there. As the boy gets driven to a hospital, Elias manages to sedate the paramedic with the sedative that was meant for him. He grabs his teddy bear and jumps out, running toward the plane. The soldiers get attacked by the vampires, not listening to what Farid is telling them. Moments later, he sees Elias from the back of the truck but the boy doesn't hear him call for him. When Elias reaches the plane, he sees his mom feed on a soldier and calls for her. When he realizes that she's not really his mom anymore, Elias blows up the plane, to the surprise of Drummond and his men. With his final strength, Farid finds Elias next to the rubble and they embrace. Smash the like button. Like you smash your mama's ass. Comment your reaction and don't be a bummer. For more videos, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. Anyway, thanks for watching. Goodbye.